Oh, I... uh, first, though, Martin Lewis has joined us to help you with your financial concern. Let's get straight hey, Martin. to it. Morning, Martin. You all right, sweetheart? Good morning to you both. Hello. Oh, good yeah, to, nice see to see you. you. Good to see you. OK, I we're going to go... I can't see you. I mean, I'm at home. I don't have a two-way <laughs> camera. <but laughs> yeah, you know never mind. Don't we'll worry, get you on. Don't worry. We'll get you on. Uh, Josie's been in touch, Martin. Uh, if I am a second-year university student, will the changes to student loans affect me in previous years, future years, or not at all? Very easy answer to that. Not at all. Oh, good. So there are big there are big changes coming to student loans for uh, students resident in England who will be starting university for the first time this September. If you are not an English resident and you are not starting for the first time this September, so you're already at university, for example, these do not affect you. And the big Big change is, in reality, for many lower and middle income students, the amount you pay to go to university will be doubling. Not because tuition fees are going up, not because of other changes, but because of changes to the structure of the way that you repay. Now, I'll do a very brief summary because I don't want to confuse people, but to give you an idea. You will repay more on the same income if you're above the threshold than the current system. So on the new system, you'll start repaying 9% of your earnings above £25,000. Currently, it's above £27,295. And crucially, instead of you stop repaying after 30 years, you stop repaying after 40 years under the new system unless you pay everything off earlier. So most people will be paying more each year and will be paying, repaying for longer. And when you do the maths on that, that means it can easily be double for some middle earners under the new system. So it's not about tuition fees. It's not anything else. It's because the way repayments after you leave university are being changed will increase the cost for most. The very highest earning graduates, by the way, will actually pay less, but most lower and middle earners will pay a lot more. Very helpful. Thank Thanks, you, Martin. Martin. Uh, Norma emailed, my energy provider has used an old reading. I gave British Gas a meter reading on the 14th of February because my bill was estimated. Uh, they used the reading to adjust the charge and sent me a new bill, which was paid in full. They've now used the same submitted reading on my new bill, which I don't feel is right. Can they do this? I'm struggling to understand it slightly. I mean, if they use exactly the same meter reading as last time and it's two months out of date, that seems bizarre. But if they use the last meeting to base your estimate on and what your usage was, that would seem right. Look, the honest answer is, in a nice way, don't ask me, ask them. Get on the phone to British Gas or use their online chat service and say, I don't understand why you're using this meter reading. I mean, the best thing to do, make sure you've given them another meter reading before you do that. Can you explain and justify why you're using that, please? and listen to their answer. It may be perfectly reasonable, in which case you take it. It may not be, in which case you ask them to change it. But I'm slightly struggling to understand the concept and the best people to talk about in this case are the energy firm itself. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Martin. Uh, Joanne's got in touch. If our first home, uh, sorry, it's our first home and we are coming to the end of a five year fixed term. How long, long should we leave it before getting our new deal? Really worried about losing the house if our interest rate goes too high, as only my husband works. We pay 2% interest fixed for five years. Well, your interest rate is going to go up and it is going to go up substantially because UK base rates have moved very substantially in the last year and your mortgage was set at the time. Mortgages were at historic cheap rates. I mean, a 2% five-year fix is an anomaly if you look over history. So let's just first have a look. In practical process, when you are coming to the end of your fix, you should be looking three or up to six months before your fix is due to end is when you start doing the work on trying to find your new mortgage rate and seeing what's available. If you do find a cheap rate, you can sometimes pay to lock in ahead of time, and many existing lenders will let you lock in deals for months in advance. So you find one of those, and if it looks good, whether you pay, some will let you lock them in without doing an arrangement fee, you have a look at what's available. What I think you're actually asking me, though, is what do I do? Are interest rates going to go up even more? Now, this is where you sort of, it gets a bit confusing. The UK base rate set by the Bank of England, which is announced on the news all the time, has been going up. And it's predicted we're near the peak now, but some people think it might go up a little bit further. Now, that dictates the rate of variable and tracker mortgages. Variable can move slightly within it. Tracker will follow it exactly. But when you're talking about the rate that new fixes are set, they actually tend to look more, simplifying a bit here, 
on the long-term predictions for interest rate, not the current interest rate, but where they think it will go in the future. <clears throat> and what we have at the moment is a really interesting situation where fixed-rate mortgages are cheaper than variable-rate mortgages, oh. and five-year fixes are cheaper than two-year fixes. It's what's known technically as an inverse yield curve. And you don't want to know about that, though. And the reason <laughs> for that is because... The prediction is long-term interest rates are going to come down from where they are right now. Now, what that means for you when you're coming to get a fix is fixed rates have actually got cheaper over the last few months, six months, let's say. They've got cheaper than their, even though the UK base rate has gone up. Now, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you whether yeah. they'll continue to get cheaper or they'll get more expensive. But certainly compared to where we were, now is a slightly cheaper time to fix than it would have been six or eight months ago because long-term prediction for fixes um, has come down and the market seems to be stabilizing. So, you know, if you want a really rough guess, I would just get on and do it. If, you, if your fixed rate is coming to an end, you want to make sure you've got a new deal yeah. in place before that fixed rate ends so it can start no, fix ends one day, new fix comes into place Martin, straight on the you back. Say at the, moment so the best thing to do is... Would you say at the moment, therefore, the fixed rate is the way to go? Well, look, fixed rates give you certainty. They give you certainty of, of you know what you're going to pay. Yeah. The more you need certainty, which was implicit in the question, you need certainty because you're worried you can't go above a certain level, the more you should head towards fixing. Now, if you've got more room to play with, you might want to gamble, and some have predicted over the next year or two that UK base rates might come down, which means trackers and variable might be cheaper than the fix you get right now. But the more you want certainty, the more you go for a fix. The more you've got room to play, the more you can look at a variable. It's more about looking at your internals than looking at the external situation. The best thing to do, though, absolutely, is go to a regulated mortgage broker who can give you one-on-one -on -one help and go through your personal situation. I can only do broad brush what's happening in the market. Someone can look at what deals are available for you and exactly what you should be doing in your situation. And I'd highly commend going to a mortgage broker to do that. You shouldn't pay them unless they actually get you a mortgage deal. So you should be able to talk to them first, see if they're likely to be able to help you. Yeah. And if they do help you, well, you'll pay them and they'll take commission if they get you a mortgage. Martin, not much time left. I'd love to get through one or two more. Uh, Donna says, will I pay tax on interest? Uh, regarding tax on interest slash income, I earn £10,430 by working and then more than £1,000 in interest. Will I pay tax on this interest? My tax code is currently uh, 1075N. Oh, it was all simple to the last bit. 1075N means you can earn £10,750 a year tax-free. That's your personal allowance, which is lower than, than the standard one. So there must be a reason for that, which you haven't stated. It makes it a bit, bit difficult. But, but in general, you can earn up to your personal allowance in, in earnings and savings. Then everybody who's a basic rate taxpayer gets £1,000 of savings that they can earn tax-free. But because you're not earning over your tax-free allowance you also are likely to get something called the starting savings rate, which means you can earn another £5,000 of interest from savings, not from earning, only from savings, tax-free. So I think it would be very, very unlikely in your situation, unless you've got, you know, ten to £20,000 worth of interest, it doesn't sound like you have, that you would pay tax on that savings interest, even though your personal allowance is lower. But what you want you to do for me is go and, go and do a, a search online on the starting savings rate, and then go and have a read about what that is, because that sounds like it applies to you. But I am just putting a bit of a wriggle room in because I don't know why your personal allowance is lower than the standard one. Great. Martin, you are As amazing. Always, thank, thank you so you, much. Martin. Hopefully you'll come in the studio next time. I do miss your face. Lots of <laughs> love. See you later. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <laughs>